for you! Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and I am a shameless fan of getting free stuff. Especially free tactical gizmos. And this is one of the most tactically cool gizmosiest gizmos I have ever been sent. It is, as you can see, the T238, which means absolutely nothing to you, I'm sure. Now, one warning before we go any further, this thing does emit flashing lights. So if you are particularly photosensitive to strobes, you might not want to watch this video or you might want to be real careful about it. So let's get into it. This is a gizmo. We have here the gizmo. It is the T238 Tracer Unit RGB version BB Nerf Gel Ball. That's what it says. Uh, and that should give you some clue as what's going on. But what it is, is a gizmo that you put onto a barrel of a projectile, whether it be a, a airsoft nerf or um, gel ball. And then when something passes through the barrel, it flashes. It gives you muzzle flash. Uh, with each projectile that goes through. If you're firing extremely high rate, it'll be lots. I have tried it on a, a higher rate of fire blaster, though I'll explain why that doesn't work so good in Nerf, uh, but I'm sure it works great with airsoft and probably gel balls. Uh, you can change the color. There is a little button right there. You push the button, it changes the color. It'll blink a few times to let you know what the new color is. So now it's on yellow slash orange. Uh, there is also green, blue, different shade of blue, purple, white, and rainbow. It will fire all just all four colors, red, green, and blue, uh, which is hilarious and fantastic. To turn the device off, you just hold it down until it does that. And now it should be, well, we're just on light mode now. Let me hold it down a little bit further. Are we back on? I know it's possible to turn this thing off. There we go. Now it's off. Now, does nothing. So you don't have to worry about draining your battery. Well, turn it back on. To recharge it, you simply thread this off. And in the front here, there is a USB charging port. They do give you a USB-C charging cable so you can charge it or you can if you have a USB charging cable it will work so right there you've got your looks like it's got two cells in there two batteries don't know what the uh, the shelf life is how many times it can blink before it goes out but LEDs use remarkably little energy and you're using it in short bursts so it will probably last you a good long while let's go back to red I like red all right so I said that it attaches to barrels and it does the standard size that it comes with when there's nothing else in there is the size of standard Nerf barrel or worker barrel that we are accustomed to. There is a, comes with a little Allen, Allen wrench and a, uh, a set screw that goes in right there that allows you to tighten it down so it'll fit. The downside with trying to use this material, this is what I use to be able to fire it off of my FDL-3, is that the inside diameter of this barrel is l greater than the inside diameter of the barrel on the gizmo. And what I kept having happen was the darts would hit that lip and would either jam or would be violently thrown off course. So it's not going to work so great for flywheelers, most likely, unless you have a really short barrel and it's really well centered. You can try it. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it in this video because I don't have any blasters that I'm willing to potentially thrash in the name of this device. However, there are other barrels that are that same diameter that work just as well. Namely, the Worker Scar Barrel. The th injection molded one will, in fact, it actually fits slightly better. And that can be tightened on there. And the inside diameter of the Worker Barrel is slightly less than the inside diameter of the gizmo. So there's no risk of it hitting it. And you can now put this thing on any blaster that that barrel fits on, which is most of the barrel material that we use in our high-end springers in this hobby. So the Talon Claw, the Caliburn, uh, the barrel that comes with the Swift, which is what I will be using it on. It also will fit quite nicely onto the barrel that comes with the newer Colonel Wasps. That's, that was specifically tapered in order to be the right size. So. Whoever created this gizmo, I don't know if it was Worker, 
But they did their research. They knew what they were about. They knew what we were about. So that will now fit on there and I can have a scar barrel with it. However, if you don't have that scar barrel or you don't want to use that scar barrel and you've managed to not lose your little gizmo, they give you even more options. They have two adapters that come with the kit. You've got one here. There's a, a hole in the metal there. Line that up with the set screw hole. And now it is rechambered to simply fit directly onto any of these standard barrels that we use, whether it be for your Caliburn or your Swift or your Town Glot or whatever. Just tighten that down. And now we'll fit. And once again, the inside diameter of these barrels are considerably are less than the inside diameter of this thing, and so you don't have to, you're not worried about it uh, hitting the inside of this as it fires. There is then a third adapter, or a second adapter, and this one is threaded, which, and I assume it's the thread for standard suppressors. So if your airsoft blaster, airsoft gun has a threaded barrel for putting a suppressor on, uh, you can put this in here and then it would work. You could hypothetically then put it on a real firearm, but I'd be willing to bet large sums of money it would immediately destroy this gizmo. So I would not do that. It is not designed for that. Don't do it. Okay, that is, that is all there really is to the functioning of it. I'm going to take it to the range and see what it does in daylight, and then I'm going to do it again at night to see how well it lights up nerf darts at night. Um, should be pretty cool. To the range! Right, we're here on the range. I have my Swift with the gizmo attached. I've got purple worker darts in here. I tried white worker darts and they were having issues, and it's also having issues with the purple worker darts. I don't know what's going on. Teething issues with my blaster. But the hope is that you'll be able to see the effects of the flash and you might be able to. You keep, keep, keep an eye on the be prepared to stop sign at the end there. I don't know if the camera is catching it, but I can definitely see a distinct flash on it because it's a reflective sign. Pretty nifty. See what it looks like uh, from the side first. Neat. What's it look like from the front? It's all stroby and stuff. I feel to really get the full effect, it needs to be dark, which it currently isn't. Luckily, editing is magic. Ah, dark and cold. Right, I'm here on the range. It's dark, dogs barking, noise in the background. We're gonna see what happens when I fire this thing in the dark. I have loaded up with white men, uh, worker darts again. Hopefully it will fire and you'll get to see the dart going down range. If that fails, I'll put some, uh, Adventure Force and we'll try it again. I have also brought out my FDL loaded with white darts and I know that's not gonna work as well, but we're gonna see, see what happens. Here we go. We'll start with just, just dark. We'll see if I can make it make blinkies. blanks. Let's try it with something with a higher rate of fire. It's having issues focusing, but I've got my FDL3. I've got it on there. As I said, because the barrel diameters are different, it might not work too well, but we're going to give it a try anyway. Here we go. That's neat actually worked better than I was expecting. Uh, well, actually, I have no idea what it actually looks like to you guys, because I'm, I'm looking down range and I can see the, the flashes and the darts and all that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm go hunt down my darts and then try it the other way around. I should try this with glow in the dark darts, but I don't know where any of them are. What do you know? These are glow in the dark darts. All right, now from the FTL, coming at you. Blinky lights are cool, let's go talk about it. Right, so final thoughts. I won't be able to really know how well this works until I actually run it at a game and can see the effect it has, but as a gizmo, that thing is just entirely too cool. How 
self-contained it is, how well engineered it is to fit not only airsoft blasters and gel blasters, but also various different options within the Nerf community, that is really good engineering and really shows shows me that, that they, they actually understand their market and they actually did the research to have the different adapters and to make it fit uh, the worker barrels, fit the standard Nerf barrels, uh, as well as, you know, options for, for airsoft and, and uh, gel blasters. That's just, that's just really good market knowledge that they actually took the time to do that. Uh, and it's just such a neat gizmo with all the different uh, features that it has, the different colors that it can be set to, um, how, um, how well it works even with high rates of fire. They, I have video, I've seen video of it firing like full auto airsoft and it just creates a, a laser beam in the dark uh, of the of the BBs lighting up. I couldn't quite simulate that with Nerf. I mean, I've got rival blasters that have that rate of fire, but they definitely wouldn't fit through here. But I was able to get it to work fairly well with my, my FDL. It would probably work even better if I had an even shorter barrel. This was the shortest barrel I could find, and I didn't feel like cutting it down just for this. Um, but if you could get this all the way snug up against here, there'd be very little distance between the flywheels and the device, and you'd have less likelihood of it getting out of whack and, and uh, hitting the lip uh, from the difference in the barrel diameters. But uh, really, really neat gizmo. I like how it works. It turns uh, One feature that I discovered that I didn't realize before, it does have an automatic turnoff. If you leave it on and, it, and nothing goes through it for, uh, it's, it's at least 10 minutes. Um, it'll automatically turn itself off, and so you know your your battery doesn't get fully drained, and that's really nice. Um, might be annoying if it were to do it in the field, but um, the uh, the odds of you having absolutely no activity for uh, for ten minutes straight is fairly unlikely in any game where you'd want to be using a gizmo like this. And you can turn it on just by pushing the button again. So. Um, one thing that may concern some people is the lack of orange. It would not be difficult to either put a ring of orange tape or tape it off. Um, you know, you could just take this off. Um, and then the, the clear bit comes out and then you could very easily tape it off and, and paint an orange ring on there if you really felt like it, uh, or if you felt it was necessary for where you were playing. Um, and that's just always a good idea. Um, I don't know that I would ever want to use, there, there's not a whole lot of situations where I'd be truly tempted to use this, but uh, I love the idea of it. If we ever start doing night games out here at the arena, I would be very much more tempted to use this just for the um, for the, the fun of it. I've been wanting to add uh, muzzle flash to ire for a long time, just putting an LED that blinked every time the counter went off, because there's actually a circuit on the counter to automatically do that. Uh, but having something like this where I could just um, extend a little bit of the barrel, though I or I probably, that's got an awful lot of barrel for the dart to get out of whack, but super cool gizmo. Um, hopefully the buy link will be down in the description. Um, if it, if for some reason it doesn't work down there, I plan to post this on, uh, at least a link, a picture about this on Instagram and probably on my Facebook. So somewhere, hopefully you'll find the buy link because it is super, super nifty. So there you have it. My thanks to the people for sending this to me. Uh, very, very cool of them. And uh, my thanks to you guys for watching.